Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. I don't usually do these kinds of videos, mostly because every fish keeper out there who has been in the hobby for at least a little while has a system of maintenance uh, that works for them. And even though they may not consider it to be, you know, carved in stone or anything, uh, they have a set of things that they do that they believe are better than other methods. And I've been maintaining aquariums for <laughs> way more years than I care to mention. And I find that aquariums are very complicated systems. They're not just a you know, glass box with fish and a filter. Uh, there is a whole pile of other things at play in here. And I have found times when I'll have an aquarium that most people would probably consider to be massively underfiltered, and it does extremely well. And I'll have other times when I'll have an aquarium that I require a great deal of filtration on it, probably more than most people would consider necessary, and I still have to be cautious when I'm doing the maintenance on it to make sure that everybody does well. That said, I do have a few qualifying statements I want to go through before we get into the actual maintenance in this. And that, first off, most of my aquariums have a fair amount of plants in them. I like plants. I think they have a great benefit on the water chemistry. Now, it's not always positive. I have run into instances where plants have a negative effect on the fish's health, but I want to save that for a later video. For the most part, in this sort of setup with a fair number of plants and, you know, room for the fish to swim and everything, it is pretty much a positive effect, especially on nitrate levels. Now, these two tanks here aren't actually going to be involved in the um, cleaning process for this because they're run by underground filters, and it also goes to high humidity planters. But they are kind of the standard that I want to hold uh, most of the other filtration systems to. And the reason for that is the tank on the right uh, is, for all intents and purposes, a fairly populated tank of guppies. And there's a lot of babies in there. The fish are doing really well. You can't detect ammonia in it or nitrite and the nitrate levels in that tank are barely measurable they're around maybe the two to three milligrams per liter and i only do uh, both these tanks get the same water change uh it is 25 percent uh two times a month so that's it and as you can see the fish are healthy happy plants are doing well there's no algae problems the tank on the left the difference in that one is I have some plecos in there I'm growing out, so they get uh, an additional uh, amount of food. And because it's pelleted, pelleted food is more concentrated than the flake food, and in that case they end up uh, you know, producing a lot more waste because plecos are messy. And there's still no ammonia in that tank, no nitrite, but there is a measurable amount of uh, nitrate, and that is roughly between 10 to 15 milligrams per liter and that is obviously quite a bit more than the one that were right but as you can see both tanks are healthy uh, there's no algae problems in either of them they both get the same amount of light same water change and that's what I'm trying to get at in the sense that aquariums are not simple systems uh, they're very complicated there's a lot of bacteria in there there's a lot of algae uh, fish plants and in my case, I also have shrimp and scuds and other microorganisms in there. And it's not the kind of thing that you can just predict easily. So anyway, enough of all that. Now, the tanks that I am going to be doing the maintenance on for this uh, are ones with box filters in it. Because I, I like box filters. They're really good. And they are the kind of filter that you know needs to be cleaned. Uh, same as canister filters, hobs, uh, all that sort of stuff. And that is actually the kind of filtration system that most people would uh, have in their fish rooms. So they're perfect for this. Now there's going to be two ways I'm going to do the maintenance for this. Uh, first off, it's going to be what I call just the cursory cleaning. I'll pull the filter out, uh, take the lid off like this, uh, take out the mechanical filtration method, whatever it is. In this case, it is a bit of poly wool. I'll rinse that out. I will not touch any of the substrate below. And then I'll put that back in and uh, we're all done. If I do this for uh, all the filters in my fish room, I can be done in like five minutes. It's, it takes a little longer, of course, when I have to set up filming and all that sort of stuff. But I would just normally just fill that basin full of water, put the filter in there, rinse it out, and go on to the next tank. And like I said, it'll be done really in short order. Every now and then, I need to do a bigger cleaning, and that will be in the next clip, which is pretty much the rest of this video. 
uh, and I will uh, clean the whole thing. Don't do that very often because, well, like I, like I said, it's not really that necessary. And it's, like I said, it's not really something I find really terribly important. So while this happens, while I'm going to do this, uh, everybody that I've come across on the internet so far, uh, they all pretty much agree that you should clean your filters in tank water. And that's what I do, by the way. But I thought, well, all right. This is one of those uh, held-to-be-true things. I wanted to test it out. So what I did is I, uh, first off, uh, did, well, four different ways of testing it on four separate different tanks, and ones that weren't too heavily planted. So I was trying to get a little bit of a variability in the results. So what I did is the first method in tank water, then I did this method in tank water, and then I... Uh, swapped it all out and did the whole thing again, uh, again after a while. I mean, this took actually a fair length of time to get through. I think I've been doing it now for the last three months. It, uh, I would do it all in tap water. And our tap water here uh, is, I think, uh, one milligram of ammonia and another milligram of uh, chlorine per liter. So it's actually, you know, a fairly substantial amount of, uh, you know, method of cleaning and you know, keeping it from you guys getting poisoned when you drink the tap water. Uh, so this is what the problem I had with this. I started off, I mean, I started off just doing the initial uh, clean the top sponge uh, or poly wool or whatever, and then I would measure for the next day and a half, um, but every six hours, I would measure for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. And... I didn't notice any, well, of course, I had a you know set of standards beforehand. I tested each of the tanks, and of course, it, you know, they were all zero except the nitrate. Uh, but that I'm not really going to worry about nitrate because it's not something that uh, this experiment really affected much. That's more of a water change kind of thing. So anyway, the ammonia and nitrite uh, was not affected. I couldn't, uh, couldn't detect any in those tanks. So I said, well, that's fine. That's kind of what I thought might happen because I'm only cleaning the top poly wool and it shouldn't really affect you know the filter that much because I'm not really disturbing the biomedia. So okay fine then I did this method with uh, tank water and I thought well possibly I could end up with a bit of a spike. So again four tanks and I did it for each of them and every six hours well that's not that. <laughs> six hours after cleaning the filter the following morning and then for like I said for a day and a half so one more time that evening and I did the tests and again no effect on ammonia or nitrate so I was thinking that well all right we're getting to the point now where uh, we should start seeing some effects on some things and so I start well, all right we'll do it with uh, tap water Again, each method, same regime, same everything. No effect on ammonia or nitrate. They were, I had no spikes. Now, at this point, I was thinking, well, I, I really couldn't put a video out about this because it, it is not the kind of result that I think people would, you know, take to heart and say, well, hey, I can just use tap, uh, tap water. It's no big deal. In honesty, because... These systems I run, I don't run them heavily on, on fish. I use mostly a, a fairly lightly populated tanks to spread everything out. There are so many other qualifying aspects to this uh, that, you know, it is not necessarily something that's going to show up. And it may be very transient, which means it's just going to be there for a short period of time. So I tried again on a number of other tanks, and I finally actually managed to get a result. But that result was in a pleco tank where I'm raising up plecos. Again, it's a system that's getting a lot more food and there's a lot more biomass than a guppy tank or a platy tank or uh, most schooling fish or even my African cichlids for that matter because the African cichlids uh, don't require as much food as a group of young plecos growing up. So with the plecos, I can get a spike in... Uh, in, sorry, not in ammonia. I didn't actually ever test uh, test and get any ammonia, 
but I did get a little bit of a spike with nitrite, and that was only uh, a few hours after I cleaned the filters. I went and tested it, and I actually got, um, uh, sorry, from a zero, which is what it normally is, it went up to, well, again, it was detectable. <laughs> and the problem with these things is, uh, my color vision isn't the best, but I had my wife look at it too. It was detectable. Uh, it was at the lowest end, uh, and then maybe slightly more. But again, it was, again, the kind of thing that was very short-lived. It wasn't something that, you know, would pop up. That all said, I know there's a lot of people out there going to tell you, always clean your filter media in tank water. And I actually wholeheartedly agree. Even though the results here didn't bear that out, I always do it, and I recommend that to people when I talk to them when they're doing maintenance, uh, simply because it is one less variable you need to worry about, and it is the kind of thing that you really should strive when you're doing aquarium maintenance to try and eliminate as many changes as possible so that uh, if you do something, uh, then you have a little bit more of a chance of figuring out what happened. And that's pretty much the way I try and do things. I like my aquariums to be predictable from when I clean it to two weeks from that time. So when I go back and clean another aquarium for a client, I don't get a surprise and I don't get a phone call, which is the kind of things I aim for. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. I know I did. I almost didn't bother uh, putting these results out there because... Again, it doesn't really hold with what most people think. And like I said, it's, these are just my results. Uh, the test kits I checked out just to make sure they're working and they're fine. And I didn't want to go to the level of uh, boiling all the filter media and putting a completely untested filter in a tank. Because I really don't want to do that to my fish. Uh, even on a short term where I can like pop in a... A fully established box filter and correct everything right away or do water change it's just not good for them and i was actually kind of reticent to do even some of the stuff i already did for this so anyway i think i've bored you guys long enough with this and if you actually managed to enjoy this video please like and or subscribe that'd be greatly appreciated and as always i will see you in the next video and bye for now